Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and today I have the author of The Grace of Crows, which won the 2013 Jack Eden Award for the Best Book in Contemporary Drama. It won second place for General Fiction for the 2013 Reader's Choice Awards and runner-up for the 2013 General Fiction with the Great Northwest Book of Book Festival. All those awards. So, and I read it and I loved it. But Thank you, Julia. I'll let you tell us more about the book. <laughs> okay. Thank you, first of all, for having me on. I really appreciate it. And it's been great connecting with you on Twitter. So yeah, I love Twitter. <laughs> I do. It's a wonderful place to find like-minded people. Uh, so what would you like to know first for your audience about the book? Well, I know that uh, you are a therapist, right? Did you write it for your... Th no, you're not a therapist? I, I have a master's in clinical psychology, and I never became licensed. I was too thin-skinned. I was... Everyone's problems I would take home f with me, and I decided that... It wasn't the best fit for me because I I, I just was I was too suffering sensitive. too much <laughs> exactly exactly so I decided to put that background my educational background into my writing so oh so okay. I I got to use my education in that way yes you did I thought you were a therapist and you wrote it to help people because I thought I'm going to use that with people you know get them to read it because it's so perfect for somebody who has anxiety disorder well yes thank you and I appreciate that and and I did and even though I'm not a therapist I did write that with in mind to help others not feel so alone I you know they say you write what you know and this is my debut novel and this there's a lot of me in it <laughs> and I I I, there's a lot of great self-help books out there on anxiety, and a lot of them have really helped me. And I had always wanted to read a fiction story about a character, because fiction can also help us. And and in an article I wrote that there, it's actually there are scientific studies that show when a reader goes on the journey with the protagonist, they start getting gathering their own inner strength. So. That's part of the reason I wrote the book. Yes, I found that sometimes fiction's more real than real. <laughs> sometimes it is. It's it's interesting because, you know, they say truth is stranger than fiction. I think when we talked before, I'm not quite sure if I remember telling you this or not, but there is one in real life. I did have a friend who became homeless, and I had this intuition about him. I had known him in my childhood. We had lost contact. And from time to time, I would just think about him. And one point, I thought about him and started crying. And I couldn't figure out why. And I called my friend who lived in our hometown. And she said, it's so odd, because just two weeks ago, I hadn't seen him in years, I picked him up hitchhiking. And he's become homeless. And mentally unstable and um, in the book I at one and one of the first drafts I had the main character whose name is Sailor she went she just intuitively thought he was living under a pier and went and found him there and my publisher and his editor said no you, you're gonna lose your readers you have to have someone tell your protagonist that he's there because that wouldn't happen in real life. Someone wouldn't have that intuition. <laughs> but they do. <laughs> I know. So I changed it. I changed yeah. it. Yeah. Because in fiction, you have to make it realistic. But, you know, that's... It's I just don't know about that. Did you ever read uh, Buffalo Gal? Won't you come out tonight? No, but I... That sounds familiar. It's Ursula K. Le Guin. Oh. And... She that is the most fabulous book, and it's totally unrealistic. <laughs> okay. Maybe my next novel. <laughs> yes, I think you should be brave and go okay. for that. <laughs> okay. 
Wow. Well, I love that book. And so the Billy was the homeless person. Exactly. And I expected him to be in the, be a larger role, have a larger role. Yeah, you know, in one my first drafts, he was, and she, you actually see her taking him home and all the way she tries to help him when she gets him home. And I had editors in the past tell me that it was too thick, that it really should be focused on the main character's healing from anxiety. So I had, I created more that he was a quest. Uh -huh. that, and... and one of my readers, I went to a book club, and she was so spot on. She said, you know, I felt like Billy was a symbolism of her, of the protagonist feeling like she was just going to lose everything in her life from yeah, her yeah. anxiety. And I thought, oh, God, she said it better than I could. <laughs> so I got you that to me. Yeah, he did. He did seem like that. You know what? You could write a sequel, though. I could do that. And I tell could. Billy's story. That's a good, thank you. That's a good idea. It's a good that's, idea. I love it. Idea. <laughs> His side of the story. I guess I want to read Billy's story. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I loved writing about him. There are certain characters you just love writing about more than other characters. Mm -hmm. So he was a great one to write about. And more about maybe in well listen to me <laughs> i'm already planning out your next book for you <laughs> okay i love getting ideas more about the raft rafting that they did oh, i love oh, oh i know that that was i liked putting that in there and again you know that was that was towards almost when i was revising it towards the end my publisher's editor said you have to have some really nice memories with him and I thought she's right so I put that in there so it's amazing as a writer I'm very open to getting suggestions and I think it really helps it because you know what grabs the reader right right yeah so yeah what what else have people said about it I well I have been very complimented, I guess I'd say, is because I feel like I set out on this goal to help people feel hopeful about their anxiety and not feel alone and realize that anxiety can create very irrational thoughts. So I put that in there and and I've had a lot of readers tell me in person and some of the readers reviews on Amazon you'll see will say that they really related. And and what I'm pleasantly surprised too because I've had, you know, it's about a middle-aged woman, mm -hmm. you know, wife, mother, and I've had a lot of young people in their 20s who have anxiety that told me they've enjoyed the novel. So that's really nice to hear that it's not just a, you know, one. <laughs> right, right. And, I, and that makes me feel really good. Yeah, I liked it that she was an older woman because so many books are for younger people. It feels like, what? We're still alive here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're big readers, too. Yes. Right? So. <clears throat> when your arthritis gets bad, all you can do is read. <laughs> and it takes you out of yourself. It's one of my favorite things to do is to know at the end of the day, after maybe a difficult day, that there's a book right next to my bedside that I can open up and forget about everything else in life. Yeah, it's waiting Stop. for you. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, this book, The Grace of Crows, is one of the books that we're offering in our monthly drawing. So um, I would encourage anyone watching this show to check out, first of all, oh, first of all, your article on uh, the art of anxiety at tvbackstory.com and then you can 
link in with your website where you can buy the book. And, uh, oh, and the drawing. Okay, so the drawing, you would go to TalkStoryTV.com and see that. And <clears throat> what else? Tell us about how, what your, what was your schedule like to write this book? Thank you for asking that, because for people who aren't writers, uh, it can be, you know, you picture someone just, you know, <laughs> leisurely dying <laughs> away the laptop. It, writing is it's a hard. It's, it's hard. It took this particular novel, I mean, this debut novel, I should say, because it was my first novel, and I had never written a novel before, took extremely long time. It took me eight years. But the reason for that is because I was learning how to write a novel as I was writing the novel. I was going to writers' conferences and taking writers, writers' classes and then would hire an editor to show me what was I doing right and what was I doing wrong. And so I was honing my skills as I was writing it. And so there were days I, I wasn't writing in, in the beginning. And I would say in the last year, I, uh, last year or two, seven days a week, some, even holidays, I would try to get in 400 to 1,000 words a day. Sometimes just getting in 200 words takes me four hours because I'm one of those writers. I self-edit as I write, and they say that you should just throw all the words on the page, but I do that. This next novel, the second novel I'm writing is going to, the first draft will be get done a lot, a lot sooner. Yes. But yeah, it's a, it's one of those things, and you and I, I really urge writers, beginning writers, to write almost every single day because you keep the flow going that way. Okay, yeah, I I tried to write one, and I just got stuck. Well, I got a little program to, and it uh, was called. It was very expensive, but it helped you analyze it. And I was doing sort of a semi-autobiographical, but I analyzed that thing to death. I changed the viewpoint so many times. I changed, <laughs> I changed everything so many. Finally, the, it just died on the vine. <laughs> and maybe one day you'll go back to it. Maybe and, you know when you when you feel like you want to. I spent and, five years just doing that. <laughs> but again, may, had you written a novel before that? No. But again, maybe you were doing what I was doing. You were honing your skills and learning along the way. Maybe I should just sit down and start writing every day and see what happens. <laughs> exactly. The other mm. thing in my writing process that I do that I heard this from somewhere really helps me and I really highly suggest it, even to people who aren't writers who are trying to figure out a problem at work, is, well, I do one of two things. One of them is when I'm going into my next scene, even if I know what I'm going to do, I'll take a piece of yellow pad paper, and get my pen, and I will write on the top, free writing. So in my brain, I it's, okay, whatever. I will put the pen to paper for five minutes or so, and I won't let it off, and I write whatever comes to my mind. And it's some most of it's gibberish, but every single time there's a gem in there that just flows from the unconscious that really helps my writing. And then if I really get stuck as I'm writing, I close my word, I close my laptop, and I'll go do laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and, then the, and then the thought comes. So... I keep, I keep my house cleaner that way, and, and then I don't have a, a, I get over my writer's block. I don't let, I don't let writer's block stop me from writing every day. I only let it stop me for maybe half an hour. Uh-huh. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I read that Hemingway would stop each night, or when he stopped writing, I think he wrote in the mornings. But he would stop in the middle of a sentence just so he'd get started again the next day. That's interesting. Yeah, because he knew how that sentence was supposed to end, so that would. <laughs> so that would give. So it kind of give him the, 
the movement to move forward again. Oh, yes. I'll try that. It might work. Mm, a pounding way. None of this stuff worked for me in my over-analytical thing that I did. <laughs> it could be. And you're a therapist. Yes. 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 And um, I have anxiety, not as bad as your heroin, but I do have anxiety as well. So I was just fascinated with this book and her children, her whole family. Right. <laughs> Problems. It sounded so problems. familiar. <laughs> I know. Everyone, and that's what, and that's what's so nice. I used to, at the height of my anxiety, I was embarrassed to say I had anxiety. I thought it made me sound like I was a weaker person. And now I realize, after writing this book and it, being honest and saying, "Yeah, I have anxiety." It's amazing everyone has something. Everyone yes. has something that they're struggling with. And so many people have anxiety. They really do. And you never know. You just think. No. She's sure not friendly. I've thought that before about people and then found out they were struggling with. <laughs> right. And it comes out in different ways because people will tell me, I never would think you had anxiety because I'm very friendly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everyone, it, our different personalities, we handle it differently. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of a particular person. I thought he was not very friendly. And I found out later that he had hypochondria. And he thought, you know, he was constantly obsessing about dying. So, <laughs> so it was hard to be friendly because his, that's where his mind was going. Yeah, we're very complicated human beings are. And, oh, we are. And, and, and the other thing that I want to put out to your viewers is that if you're struggling with any emotional issues, mental health issues, is that, first of all, you're not alone. And second of all, even if you've tried so many things and they haven't worked, please, please, please do not give up hope because what maybe didn't work in the past may work now. What you didn't think would work, like perhaps doing your art. For me, I had tried therapy. I had tried a number of things. And interestingly, writing this book, I would say if a, a scale of anxiety from 1 to 10, I was at 10 a lot of the times. It pushed it down to three, sometimes two, wow. sometimes one. And, you know, I'll have bad days sometimes. But now I've learned to realize that it's not, you're never going to be perfect. And it's yeah. okay to accept that, yeah, this is my struggle, but I can still be a happy person. Yeah, that's great. That's great. For the most part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and tell us the name of your website where people can find the book. Okay, well, they can find it on my website, which if they just Google Tracy Sean, and my name is spelled T-R-A-C-Y. I have to think of the spelling of my phone name. <laughs> and the last name is S-H-A-W-N author. If they just put that in, they'll find my website. But it's on all the major book, online outlets, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, my publisher put it on, you know, the ones that online. So if, and particularly um, Amazon, you'll see the reviews. So you can see what it's about more than what, what we discussed here. And you can see what people have said about it in reviews, some editorial reviews as well. So that just gives you some more information. Okay, great. And right. be sure and contact me when you finish your next book. Okay. Thank you, Julia. I really appreciate you having me on here. Thank you for being Thank on. You. Thank you.